The automotive industry is under pressure to reduce CO2 emissions, both from legislation and from consumer pressure. This is driving change to make vehicles more fuel efficient. A key focus for the industry to achieve this is to downsize engines. In essence, this means smaller engines and fewer cylinders, moving from say four cylinders to three. A smaller engine with fewer cylinders means lower pumping and frictional losses, which reduces fuel consumption. Customers, however, are reluctant to trade bigger, more powerful engines for better fuel economy. To regain the lost performance from the smaller engines, car makers are pressure charging this new generation of engines. This is a process of squeezing more air and fuel into the engine to increase its performance so that it feels like a bigger engine but delivers better fuel economy. One of the key challenges in this new approach is to make the small engine feel like a bigger engine all of the time. Whilst the small pressure charged engine may have the advertised power of the bigger naturally aspirated engine it replaces, it struggles to deliver performance at low speed the classic case of turbo lag. V-Charge addresses this issue and allows automotive engineers to deliver CO2 improvement without compromising on performance and customer acceptance. It delivers big engine feel all of the time. So how does it do this? The V-Charge unit is a gearless, fully variable pressure charger which is driven by the engine via a conventional pulley. This pulley drives the small, continuously variable transmission which is then linked to a step-up drive, both of which use gearless traction drive technology. The step-up drives the impeller of the supercharger which is a conventional centrifugal compressor. So, we can convert an engine speed of say 1500 RPM up to 150,000 rpm at the impeller, all without using gears. The beauty of the system is that it's fully variable, allowing for high levels of boost at low speed, which addresses the lag problem, and also allows boost to be adjusted at higher engine speeds so that energy and fuel is not wasted, giving big engine feel all of the time with the benefits of small engine fuel economy. How does this compare to conventional pressure charging technologies? Let's start with a turbocharger. This is a centrifugal compressor which is driven by the exhaust gases of an engine. As engine speed increases, it creates exhaust gas which drives a turbine wheel which in turn is connected to a compressor wheel which compresses air to pump into the engine, thus increasing its power. The problem with turbochargers is that at low engine speed there's not much energy in the exhaust gas to drive the turbine. There is always a lag whilst the speed picks up to create more exhaust and hence more boost. Once it's spooled up it works well, but at higher engine speeds there's too much boost, at which point the surplus exhaust gas is blown off through the wastegate. A supercharger on the other hand is not run by hot exhaust gas but is driven by the engine via a pulley. It's basically a mechanical air pump which blows air into the engine according to the speed at which the engine is running. More engine speed equals more boost. It means that a supercharger can be set up to give good boost at low engine speeds but the consequence of this is that at higher speeds there's too much pressure which needs to be restricted or blown off through a wastegate system. Considering that engine power and fuel has been used to create this pressurised air, it's very wasteful to throw it away. V-Charge, in contrast, delivers the right amount of boost just when it's needed. At low engine speed, the boost can be increased almost instantaneously, giving great low speed performance. It can be controlled to deliver just the right amount of boost throughout the engine speed range tapering off at higher engine speeds so that the precious energy is conserved and not wasted. It also runs cool which keeps cost and technical complexity low.